Welcome back, my name is Guy. This time I'm going to build this small but massively sturdy little workbench. Let's get to work. Well, I started out with about 100 board feet of 8 quarter ash. Most of those boards were well over 10 feet long. So I marked out all the parts, figured it all out, and started cutting them up into more manageable chunks. Now some of these boards won't fit over my 8 inch joiner, so, and there's no reason to keep them that width. So I've separated out the boards that will go over the joiner. These boards won't, so I'm going to take these over to the bandsaw and start rough cutting out some of the parts. Well here's all the parts. I've got one face flat and one edge flat and perpendicular to that flat face. That's hard to say. Uh, these are all the uh, pieces for the base. These are the pieces for the top. I'm not going to use all these. I think I'm going to have one or two extra. And then these are all the pieces that were basically cutoffs. I'll do something with those later. For now I need to get all these pieces four sides square. little change of plans. I'm just going to do the top for now. I'm going to leave the base and all the parts just as they sit right now because I need to flatten those again. And I figured while I have these flat I might as well go ahead and glue it up. So I'm going to take these through the thickness planer and actually run them on edge until they're all the same. What I'm really shooting for is anywhere between two, two and three quarters and a three inch thick top. I'm going to be somewhere in that range. It's not going to be three inches but it's going to be close. I've got the three individual pieces out of the clamps and uh, they came out really nice and flat. I'm really happy. I'm still going to run them through the thickness planer again, make sure they're all even all the way around, joint these edges, and then glue these three pieces up to make one big piece. Well, it's all glued up and just getting rid of the squeeze out here. And it came out really nice and flat. There's a couple little tiny spots I'm going to have to take care of. But uh, holding my straight edge across this, it's really, really nice and flat, which is always a good thing. So I'm going to leave it here in the clamps for a full day, and then we'll take it out tomorrow. I cleaned up the top and the bottom of this with a card scraper, and I checked it for twist, and there's no twist in it, which is good. And Checked it for flat, and about right there, from about here, and then down to here, it's dropping about a 32nd of an inch. I'll worry about flattening this later, but for now, the top is done. Well, here's all the pieces, parts that are going to make up the base itself. Right now, they're 1 and 9 sixteenths of an inch, actually a little bit less than that. Um, but all these are going to get laminated together, and after I laminate them together, then I'll get them down to a final thickness of three inches. <clears throat> now that I've got those together, I know they're not going to slide around, I'm going to put them in the vacuum bag. Now I'm using a vacuum bag simply because I have it. Um, if you don't have a vacuum bag, you can just as easily use clamps. Well, I've evacuated all the air out of the bag, and there's probably uh, three to four tons, maybe more, pressure on here. More than enough to clamp these and laminate them together for me. So, I'm just going to let these sit in the clamps for about 45 minutes to an hour, and then take them out and allow the glue to dry overnight.
I've marked out the mortises for the top and bottom structures on all four legs, front and back. Now I'm just going to go over the mortiser and start cutting these out. Well, after working with the chisel a little bit, I cleaned up all the little pieces in the corners and the sides that the mortising chisel didn't get. And I'm nice and flat on the sides and on the bottom, so the legs are pretty much done and I'm going to start working on the rails. I'm ready to start forming the tenons that go on the end of the stretchers that fit in the mortises between the legs. And to do that, I'm going to use a dado stack. In this case, I have three quarters of an inch, a miter gauge, and my rip fence on my table saw. Let me zoom in and I'll show you how I have this set up. The first step to setting this up is to get the height right on the dado stack. Now I've got one of the legs here and it's up against the blade. I'm just going to slowly raise the blade up until it is just below this mortise wall right here. Well I know the depth of the mortise is about two inches. It's a little bit over. But I want to make the length of the tenons two inches. So in a normal setup the inside of this blade right here is zero. So if I go out this way, I need to subtract an eighth of an inch. So I'm going to set the blade up for one and seven eighths of an inch. And that should give me two inches to the outside of the blade. I put my miter gauge in its slot, and I'm going to take this fence. I'm going to move it over like this and tighten it down. The next thing I want to do is I want to make sure that it's really nice and square to that fence. I'm just going to take a, a known square and put it up against there and I'm at perfect 90 degrees. So now I can take one of the legs or one of the stretchers, put it on here, make a test cut and see how it looks on the leg itself. Now if you notice I made a very shallow cut here and this is just for test purposes. What I want is that initial cut I'm going to put it up against there as a test, and I want this to be even. Now I knew it was going to be a little bit short, so I'm just going to take it over the table saw and raise the blade up just a little bit. It may take two or three passes, may take four passes, but eventually I'm going to get this so it's even with the inside wall of this mortise right here. Well, it took me two more passes, but I got the fit just right, so I'm going to take this little rabbit I just cut on the end of the board, I'm going to put it up against the outside of the leg, and this is nice and flush with the inside of that mortise wall. So I need to cut this cheek here at two inches and the two shoulders at two inches. This on the back here, these tenons are going to be offset, so that is going to be a second setup. But I'm going to go ahead and cut all these now. With that line marked, I can take that and put it up against the blade in my table saw, start a little bit lower and slowly raise it up until I get a nice fit inside the mortise. I've got that second cheek cut and these fit in here really nice. That is exactly the fit I'm looking for. I can get in there with hand pressure. I can pick up the leg and it still sits in there. Now on this particular one, it's still just a little bit too fat this distance right here. So I'm going to need to clean this up with a hand plane and some chisels. I have to work on each mortise and tenon individually to get them to fit. Well, it took about five minutes of futzing with a block plane and a couple chisels. But I got it to go in, and uh, it's really nice and tight here. There's no gap, and it's perfectly square. Now these holes I just drilled are for pegs that are going to go through the outside of the leg, through the tenon, and then back inside the leg. 
but when I do this I'm going to draw bore them and what that means is I'm going to put this leg in here, let me get this in here first alright so I've got a nice tight joint right there I'm going to take the drill bit that I drilled those holes with and put it in give it a little twist, maybe a little tap like that now you can see where I've marked the center of those holes what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark another point about a sixteenth of an inch from that spot about right there now that I've got that second point marked I'm going to go over the drill press and drill these through Well, I've put the joint back together now, and if you look down into these dowel holes, you can see that those holes are offset now. Now, the whole idea behind this is, after I put glue on the joint, I'm going to take a dowel rod, and I'm going to sharpen the end, or make it conical, and I'm going to force that down in there. And what's going to happen is, is the dowel rod is going to go through there, and then it's going to start bringing this piece here closer to this piece, kind of acting like a clamp. So when I push it down in, it's going to go down in, bend around, and hopefully hit the pole in the bottom. And that'll bring this joint really nice and tight, and I won't need any clamps to glue it up. Now as I pounded these in there, I could feel that little resistance initially, but then it just pulled this really nice and tight, the joint is perfectly closed, and I use plenty of glue. I don't want this to fail over time. I'm just going to take a flush trim saw and get rid of the excess dowel here. Well, that's the first end assembly complete. I need to do the other one, and then I'll attach the two end assemblies with the long stretchers. The base is basically complete right now. I've cleared out my old bench and put this where it's going to be living. All I need to do now is to cut the top to final length. Well, I've got the bench completely flipped upside down right now, and it's rocking a little bit. That's mainly because my floor is <laughs> less than level. So if I stand on the tabletop and move the legs, I'm nice and solid all the way around. I've got these holes here that are countersunk and then a through hole for lag bolts. I just need to mark where those are going to go, and then I'll pre-drill them and then bolt this down. I've got the bench where I want it, and it's nice and stable. I'd have to say this thing weighs between 150 and 200 pounds at least. It's really heavy. It's really sturdy. I'm really happy with it. So that's it for now, and later on I will install a vise on this.